Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cupid. In this video, I want to break down the number one question that I've received since the Microsoft Fabric public preview announcement, and that is, how much does it cost? And you know, what what are the licensing options? So they announced a blog post that actually talked about the licensing pieces. This dropped on June 1st and goes through what your options are for the new fabric capacities, talks about OneDrive storage and other items that will be in play. But what I wanna do is I wanna just kind of walk down the line and just kind of reset everyone so we know what we're talking about from that licensing perspective. So this includes the new fabric capacities and also what's going on with the stuff that we knew about before. First and foremost, these new fabric capacities kind of have two options. The first one is available today, and this is the pay as you go option. And so you can go to the Azure portal and you can create a fabric capacity. Enough of all this talking, you know, we like to do it here in Guy in a Cube. Let's do what? Let's head over to my machine. All right, I'm gonna jump over to the Azure portal. You can see here that I have a fabric capacity. This is the F2 SKU. And so what we can do is if we just go to a resource group, I can create and type in fabric and we can see the Microsoft fabric capacity. So let's go ahead and create. What'll happen is that we can give it a capacity name and you can choose the size that you want here from F2 all the way up to F2048. So to put this in perspective, if you know anything about Power BI premium capacities, a P1 SKU is the equivalent of an F64 fabric SKU. They changed up some of the core counts or the capacity units that are available. So the premium P1 SKU used to have eight cores. Now it is capacity units. And so there's 64 capacity units for a fabric capacity. And from there you can do the math and figure out what's available. So that means that there are SKUs that are below what was available on the Power BI side now. And there is a SKU that's above what the premium P5 SKU was. There's also a reserve reserved instance option that will come later in the year. And that reserve instance from a pricing perspective will be the equivalent of what you can pay for a Power BI premium capacity today. Okay, so that's the main piece of the fabric capacities, but you have different capacity options today. Let's head over to the Power BI portal. This gives you a great view of what are all of the options available to you. So if I go to capacity settings, you'll see that we have Power BI Premium. These are the capacities that have been available for a while now. So this is Power BI Premium Gen 2. The Power BI Premium capacities provide all of the new fabric capabilities. So if that's what you currently have, Good job, you're in the game. Think of a Power BI premium capacity as that reserved instance, right? But this is something you can purchase from the Microsoft 365 side as opposed to the Azure portal. We've got Power BI embedded. So these are the A SKUs that were available on the Azure side. These are still available. You can purchase these. You can get these from the Azure portal for embedding purposes. However, just know that these only provide Power BI capabilities. These do not provide the new fabric workloads that are available. So you either need to be on Power BI premium capacities or the new fabric capacities that are available in Azure. The nice thing is those fabric capacities, they are available at those equivalent A SKU tiering as well. And actually you can go a little bit below that now with fabric capacities. There is a caveat on the Power BI content side of it, but I'll cover that in a little bit. But just know that if you are on a Power BI embedded SKU today, you can actually just move over to a fabric capacity in the Azure portal and you're good to go. We've got trials that are available as well. So I did a separate video talking all about trials. This provides you a full fabric capacity 60 day trial at the F64 for capacity unit SKU. These are freely available. And then lastly, we'll also see the fabric capacities within side of the fabric portal. Again, you create these on the Azure portal side, and then you have options there for what SKU that you want. Okay, that's cool. We've got these fabric capacities, but what happened to the Power BI licensing? Is that still a thing? The answer is yes. There was a Power BI free license that was available. This allowed you to get into the portal combined with Power BI premium capacities. You could actually do large scale deployment for users without needing a Power BI Pro license. Power BI free license has been renamed to Microsoft Fabric Free. If you had Power BI free in your organization and users were assigned to it, that now shows Microsoft Fabric Free. It's the same thing. It gets you into the portal and lets you just look around and whatnot. You'll have access to my workspace. You can create content with inside of my workspace. 
but you can't share or do anything like that. RBI Pro is still available at $10 a month US, and that allows you to create Power BI content. So it doesn't let you do anything from a fabric content creation perspective, but this will actually allow you to create Power BI reports, share those with other Power BI Pro users. From a fabric perspective, even if you have a fabric capacity, if you want to create Power BI reports, you still are required to have a Power BI Pro license. So if you want to create that Power BI report, you need to have a pro license regardless of what capacity is backing the workspace. The fabric capacities and Power BI premium capacities will allow you to create lake houses, warehouses, data flows, gen two, all of those things without needing a Power BI pro license, because those have been elevated to fabric workloads and those are just covered by the capacity. From a report consumption perspective, as long as you're on a fabric capacity F64 SKU or higher, or you're on Power BI Premium, free users can consume content without needing a pro license. If you are below and you want to consume Power BI reports inside of the Fabric Portal, you will still be required to have a Power BI Pro license. Power BI Premium per user is still available. That is set at $20 US a month. And this allows you premium capabilities at a reduced cost for not needing a Power BI Premium capacity or a Fabric capacity. You can create that Power BI content and you you can do those items that were labeled as Power BI Premium before, so deployment pipelines, things of that nature. I did see a lot of questions about, you know, is Power BI Premium per user still even relevant here? And the answer is, I think yes, because there are scenarios where customers just want to take advantage of the Power BI capabilities and not necessarily the broader fabric capabilities. This is an option for you. It's a lower price tier and you can still have some of those premium capabilities. So for small organizations, this could still be really valuable for you. Circling back to the pricing blog that was mentioned on June 1st, it did talk about the pay as you go option. And it also talked about the reserved instance option that'll be coming later this year. However, it also mentioned another thing that was interesting. It talked about storage costs for one lake. So this means that there will be extra costs for storage. And if you think about this, this you know, that data storage could get quite large, especially if you're taking full advantage of one lake and lake houses, things of that nature. The blog post did call out it will be similar pricing to Azure data lake storage costs. It did not list out specific pricing for one lake storage. However, I did see a comment from Amir Nets talking about the fact that there will be storage that comes with the capacity. So you're not going to get charged immediately. But if you go over that storage limit, you'll be charged for that overage. The thing that has not been released yet is what is the storage that comes with the capacity and how much will that storage cost. So stay tuned on those items. It has not been announced yet. So once the one lake storage piece is dropped, we'll do a whole video on that. Another common question I hear is, well, what about GCC? So this is the government cloud on the US side and GCC has always been in this weird spot where, you know, it's kind of bridged between commercial and government cloud. And so a lot of those customers are kind of stuck. Typically what happens is capabilities for government cloud comes after general availability. So preview items don't typically make it into government clouds. So there are a couple things that I know that are coming in the future. So hopefully in the next couple months or towards the end of the year or towards when, whenever we get to general availability. So the first thing I wanna mention is that right now, if you get a fabric capacity and or you're playing with any of the workloads, even on Power BI Premium, those fabric workloads, so we're talking about lake house, warehouse, data flows gen two, you're not being charged CPU cycles or compute cycles for those items currently. So you can use those without incurring any cost. This is to really help you understand the workloads, understand what is the need for these items over and above what you have today with Power BI. And in the capacity metrics app, you'll be able to actually break out what is preview load versus non-preview load. So you can actually see what is that going to be. You will start incurring that compute cost on August 1st. So be aware of that. So between now and August 1st, this is a great time to actually start testing workloads, seeing out what the load is, what the compute cost is before you actually incur that cost and potentially get throttled as a result. It was already mentioned, but fabric capacity reserved instances will be coming later down the road later this year. So be aware of that. And that will come at a reduced cost. It was also mentioned that there is a planning calculator in the works. And so a lot of people have asked, how much capacity do I need? And that's always been a hard question to answer. It depends on so many factors. 
factors. Once it gets dropped, we'll do another video on that to see how it helps you with planning your capacity usage in your organization and other things to think about. I already mentioned the one lake storage cost and you know what that is going to be, how much storage actually comes with your capacities. That information will be coming out later this year. So I will keep you up to date on that front. All right. That was a whirlwind of information about what the current state is for licensing and costs and things of that nature. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about this, happy to answer you. I will keep you updated as I get more information and we'll have updated videos as well. This one's specific for the initial public preview release, but stay tuned for more information. And if you wanna learn more about Fabric, just in general, check out this playlist where I'm gonna get you started with Microsoft Fabric and keep you up to date. As always, thank you so much for watching, keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.